we really had no idea being the first women swimmers or athletes here at the University of South Carolina, how far that would go. I mean, we just felt special to be here. We didn't, um, you know, we, how could we know that uh, women's sports would just explode in the 80 and that Title IX would have the impact that it has. Tina Kiesling was one of the recipients of the first 18 female scholarships for the swim team. While Kiesling was excited to have the opportunities, she felt the pressure of being a female athlete on scholarship. Uh, morning practice every day, every morning for an hour, and then two to three hours sometimes after school. So we were swimming uh, not quite 20 hours a week. It was a lot. Other people knew we were the first two. You know, I knew it, other people knew it. But yeah, I, I do think that there was some kind of pride that, you know, somebody worked hard for this. You know, I think I knew it back then. Somebody worked really hard for this and somebody is celebrating right now. This is new and maybe it's not gonna work. Did I feel like anybody thought that was wrong? That females were being treated equally? Maybe a little. Um, but certainly not from the coaching staff, not from the swimmers, not from any of the men that I swam with. Kiesling knows that her life could have been a lot different without that scholarship. Being an athlete now is popular. You know, back in the 80s, I don't know when it happened, but sometime back in the 80s, to be an athlete was popular. It wasn't so in my day. And when my coach sat me down and said, you know, this, this is a real possibility for you, it made me swim even harder. And it was something that I was really interested in. Um, I'm one of eight children, and um, I worked through the summer saving my money, hoping I could maybe get to community college. And um, I thought that was kind of it. I don't think I'd have the drive that I have now, you know. I decided at 53 to get back into swimming. I don't think I would have, you know, I wouldn't have done that. And that's just opened so many doors for me. The mother of two children with special needs currently advocates for equal rights of others through her work with the National Inclusion Project and notes that her place in history had a huge impact on her life after her days as a scholarship student athlete ended. You know, I don't think I realized it at the time. I was a naive 18 year old coming to school, but years later, when you think back, you know, that's exactly, that's exactly the same fight I'm having right now. And believe me, I'm running into obstacles. One of the things that I've done is I've worked with the National Inclusion Project to promote um, programs for people with disabilities so that they can actually be included. And so the first year that we started, we call it Integrated Member Services, which means um, it's not that we're doing away with segregated classes completely. If parents or, or people with disabilities want them, they're there. But we also really want to get the word out that um, they could go in any class or any course Whatever is offered to a typical person, they can participate in that too. It's, it's a part of me. You know, everything I learned down here at the University of South Carolina and being involved in sports has just always stayed with me. And to come back, it's, you know, it's really special.